Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We got some fantastic information for you. It's both good and bad. And hopefully by watching this video, you can avoid the bad and enjoy the good. Let's get into it. So we're going to talk about what happened to your money. You've been robbed. Up to 20% of your wealth is gone. Somebody took it. We're going to find out who, and we're going to find out what you can do about it. In fact, that the same thing has happened to everybody, and we're going to find out what some major institutions and big businesses are doing all about it, because by learning from what they're doing, you can copy them. You can do the same thing that they're doing in order to prevent the losses and protect their wealth, and even in some cases, increase their wealth. So that's what we're looking to do is increase the wealth. Let's get into it. So our channel is devoted to giving you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. Now, cryptocurrency involves a substantial amount of risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Now, I put this here not just because I need to put the legal mumbo jumbo here, but really, this is, this is more important than just a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo. This can make a huge difference if you pay attention to what they're talking about in this paragraph down in here. You can use that information to help you build your wealth and avoid risk of loss. Um, but without that information, some people end up doing like, uh, they treat investing like going to Vegas. They're going to pull the slot machine. They're going to hope for the best and maybe they'll come out a winner. You don't want to be that kind of investor. Be investor that follows the smart money. Do what the smart money does and you'll get the same results that they get. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But before we get into it, I want to take one more short diversion. Bitcoin prices year to date. Now I know this is September 9th, 2020. Right now, the price of Bitcoin today is October 14th, 2020. So it's about a month later. The price of Bitcoin is in the same ballpark, right around 11,300. Bottom line is this, this is the important part. The percentage growth year to date for Bitcoin is 53%. Now think about that for a second, 53%. Do you know of a stock that you could have bought that went up 53% in the last 10 months since January 1? Do you know a piece of property you could have invested in or some other thing that you could have put your money into that you yourself had enough money to invest in that would have given you 53% return on your investment in 10 months and 14 days? given that today is October 14th. I don't know of very many things. In fact, to be honest with you, I don't know of anything that I could have put my money into that I would have expected to get 53% return. So with having that said, there was $9 trillion in stimulus that has been done this year alone in 2020. $9 trillion in stimulus. Let that sink in for a second, because, you know, we're so accustomed to hearing these huge numbers. We're so accustomed to hearing these huge numbers in the news that we've grown tone deaf to them. Nine trillion dollars. That's a lot of money. In fact, Estimates say that in 2020 alone, the U.S. has created 22% of all U.S. dollars issued since the birth of the nation. Now, I want you to take a, a moment to really think about that. This year alone, 22% of every dollar out there that's in existence got printed. 
Let me flip that on its, uh, on, on its head and say it in a different way. For every dollar you own, it's now worth 80 cents. If you had $100 in the bank, it's now worth $80. If you had $1,000, it's now worth $800. If you had a $1 million, it's now worth $800,000. Because what they've done is they've added 22% to the total amount of money out there. So for every dollar you owned, it's now worth significantly less. Now, your buying power may not decrease today. It may not decrease tomorrow. But over time, that extra influx of money is going to affect your pocketbook. There will be a point in time where instead of getting a loaf of bread for a dollar, and I know it's not a dollar, I'm using this as an example, because the math is easier when it's a dollar. All of a sudden you're gonna pay a dollar twenty, a dollar thirty, a dollar forty, a dollar fifty for the very same loaf of bread. Now, well, let, instead of me telling you, let's get into it. COVID's 19, nine, COVID 19's nine trillion dollar global price tag is just the beginning. So whether you're uh, whether you vote donkey or whether you vote elephant, it doesn't matter. Both sides are wanting to spend more money. But the two things worth keeping in mind: one is that the net borrowing. Let me let me emphasize this. One is that the net borrowing needs of the four biggest economic powers, the United States, the Eurozone, Japan, and the United Kingdom, are already triple 2019 levels. The balance sheets of the group of four central banks, meantime, will soon exceed an unthinkable $22 trillion. Two, these unprecedented responses might not be enough. That's the thing that they're looking at, is they're talking about how they may need to actually spend more money. So here's the question I have for you. And pay attention, this part's really important. What can you do to protect your wealth? What can you do to protect your future wealth? And what can you do to increase your wealth? Well, you know, you're not the only one asking those vital questions. Big businesses are asking the same thing. I mean, if you've got a billion dollar business, you probably have a bank account, a treasury, that contains hundreds of millions of dollars. And you don't wanna see those hundreds of millions of dollars become worthless because the Fed is printing money. So what are businesses doing? Let's take a look. There's a group of businesses that are investing those treasuries into Bitcoin. Yeah, I said that, I said that correctly. Bitcoin is what these treasuries are investing in. So like when you start looking at this list and looking at the numbers here, they're staggering. MicroStrategies Inc. invested almost half a billion, 425 million. That's close to half a billion dollars. That is a huge amount of money. Now, MicroStrategies is a publicly traded company. That means they have stock investors. That means the public is buying them. That means they have to report to the Securities and Exchange Commission. That means they're under a whole lot of legal regulations. So when they do something like this, not only do they have a team of lawyers that evaluate it and decide, hey, can you do this legally? Can you not do this legally? But they also have a financial responsibility to their shareholders to do things that are responsible. Now, there was a point in time where no self-respecting CEO, no self-respecting president of a company would be investing their treasury into Bitcoin. They wouldn't be converting their bank account from US dollars to Bitcoin dollars or any other cryptocurrency for that matter, for that fact. But this year, we are starting to see a plethora of companies doing just that. MicroStrategies was the first to announce this about three weeks ago, 
But as you can see, the list has grown quite a bit. And the biggest one on the list, they're actually a fund. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is actually a fund that you can buy their shares on the stock market. It's called GBTC. And when you buy shares in GBTC, you're actually buying, indirectly, you're buying Bitcoin. But 90% of the money that's invested in the GBTC Bitcoin Trust is from institutions, it's from big money, it's from those companies that spend a whole bunch of money hiring a whole bunch of people to give them really good advice, not only lawyers, but they've got analysts and they've got other, other employees that are involved in helping them get research before making this decision, before they invested into the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or any of these other companies taking their treasuries and investing them into Bitcoin. And as you can see from this number, we're looking at six and a half billion dollars that's been invested in Bitcoin from all of these different companies. Now, here's the important point. If these guys are doing it, should you be doing it? What do they know that you didn't know? Well, we may not be able to get our hands on the research and information that they have, but you can see what they're doing from the public record and you can copy what they're doing for your own purposes. So in other words, if the smart money is investing in Bitcoin, you should at least consider investing in it. Now, I've even, I have invested in cryptocurrency. I think it's a good thing to do. Obviously, I'm making this video. But don't just trust me. Do your own research. Find out what's really going on. Find out, if you can, what kind of information did these companies have when they decided to take $400 million and invest it into Bitcoin. Why would they do that? Why wouldn't they put it into gold? Why wouldn't they put it into real estate? Why didn't they put it into something else in the stock market or a bond? Why did they think that Bitcoin was the best place to put it? Because if you knew what they knew, you might come to the same conclusion. One of the resources that you can use is go to my YouTube channel and take a look at our other videos. I've got a lot of videos that we've made in the last year that give you a lot of good reason about why Bitcoin. Why should you get your money into Bitcoin? And, and you know, the, the thing is, you could spend hours and hours and hours on that. Here's another company that just announced, they're not on the list I showed you, it's called Stone Ridge, and they revealed that they invested $115 million in Bitcoin. And it's kind of an interesting story because Stone Ridge is another one of these financial institutions. Three years ago, the founders of the $10 billion Stone Ridge Asset Management had a problem. Several of the advisory firm's founders and senior employees were buying Bitcoin at such a rate, it became obvious the purchases needed to be looked at more closely by the firm's auditors. As word got out that Stone Ridge's staff was personally investing in Bitcoin at such a scale, the firm's clients increasingly wanted to express, express the same thesis. As Stone Ridge's co-founder, Robert Gutman, put it, that thesis is a belief in the long-term growth of an open source monetary system in assets like Bitcoin. In other words, their customers wanted to know what's up and why did you pick Bitcoin? Why are you investing in Bitcoin? And the conclusion came so strongly that they actually started the business, has now started investing in Bitcoin and has invested $115 million. Now that is significant. Let it sink in. Let it have an impact on you. Receive that information because it could be vital to your future, especially when the government is printing so much money. It's literally like legal stealing. 
They go and they take 20% of your dollars and then distribute it to other people just through the simple fact that in this year alone, they've printed 20% of the current supply of money. In, in 2020, in one year, 20% of all the money that's US dollars that are in existence came into existence this year. So that's my video for you today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. How can I be of service to you? In the meantime, and, and answer that question, please do. Please put your comments in the comments section below. I will reply to you. Um, we would love to hear from you. So use that comment section, whether you agree or disagree. I would love to hear your polite disagreements. In the meantime, do me a favor and like, subscribe, and hodl, and have a fantastic day.